I'm sure every one of you has found themselves in a situation where they know there is something important they need to do, but they just can't get themselves to do it. Well, a lack of motivation could be the reason. That is why in this two-part series we want to talk about motivation and how it can help us act towards our goals. Motivation can be defined as a mental process that enables us to initiate, control, maintain, and evaluate actions. We need motivation for every move we make. Therefore, it is a critical factor if we want to get ourselves to do the work that brings us closer to our goals. But how does motivation lead to action? One way to look at the connection between motivation and action is the Rubicon model. The model consists of four stages, the pre-decisional, the pre-actional, the actional, and the post-actional stage. During the pre-decisional stage, we make up our mind about which of our many wishes we want to pursue next. For example, whether we want to watch the next episode on Netflix after the first one ends, or get up and finish our homework assignment. We generally decide on one option based on two aspects that the individual subjectively assesses, how desirable a goal is, and how likely they think it is that they will reach this goal. Thus, we decide on the option that seems the most attractive and achievable for us. The right amount of self-efficacy is a crucial factor in this phase. Self-efficacy describes an individual's belief in their ability to act in ways necessary to complete a task successfully. Therefore, confidence in your abilities is pivotal if you want to make productive choices and can help you to act towards your goals. The second stage of the Rubicon model is the pre-actional stage. Here one should mentally specify what actions need to be taken to reach one's goal. Implementation intentions concerning the initiation, execution, and termination of actions can help to deal with difficulties that may arise when one tries to reach their goal. Thirdly, the actional phase takes place. Here, one finally starts to act on their plans. Goal-oriented actions are initiated and should be continued until the desired goal is achieved. The right amount of effort and endurance is needed to complete the task successfully. Additionally, one needs to overcome distractions that can tempt the individual to abandon their activity. Reaching a state of flow is desirable in this phase. A flow experience describes a mental state where you lose yourself in an activity so much so that your attention seems to be fully focused on the current task and time seems to fly by. Lastly, in the post-actional stage, you evaluate the whole process that just took place. The outcome of the process is compared to the expectations formed in the pre-actional phase. You think about your efforts and the results, failures, or successes that followed. Motivation is needed to carry out this evaluation thoroughly. This process can help you understand your struggles and how you can successfully deal with them in the future. By having this process of decision-making, planning, acting, and evaluating in mind, you can attempt to modulate your thoughts and actions in a way that can help you to improve your work efficiency and move you closer to your desired goals. In the next episode, we will talk about some practical tips psychological literature has to offer to boost your motivation and make better and more productive decisions in day-to-day -day life. We hope you have a great rest of your week, and we are looking forward to talking to you next Thursday.